Hey, Mental Moss here, and there is some big Borderlands news, because Take-Two Interactive has acquired Gearbox Entertainment from the Embracer Group. However, this $460 million acquisition doesn't secure all the assets from Embracer's seventh subsidiary. So let's break it all down. Take-Two Interactive is the parent company of 2K Games. You might know them from a little studio called Rockstar Games that made Grand Theft Auto? Well, Take-Two Interactive has purchased Gearbox Entertainment and they are placing them in their 2K Games subsidiary. This is of course the publishing partner that Gearbox has been working with since the first Borderlands game. However, while this transaction is good for the majority of the developers, as it saves them from the Embracer group, some jobs have been made redundant and therefore some folks were let down by the company. Most of this is in the marketing and communications department, but I'm also seeing layoffs in the publishing side. So to my friends over at Gearbox, I'm sorry for your combined loss. Thank you to all the people that made our entertainment possible and I hope you quickly find your happiness again. There are also folks that will remain at Embracer, because Gearbox Entertainment was the seventh subsidiary in the Embracer group and other acquisitions by Embracer were placed underneath the care of Gearbox. However, those additional studios are not part of this deal. This means that Gearbox Publishing San Francisco, Shanghai and Amsterdam will remain at Embracer, but they have also suffered layoffs. Those Gearbox Publishing Studios were previously known as Perfect World Entertainment and they will be keeping the publishing rights to the Remnant franchise, the upcoming Hyper Light Breaker and other notable unannounced games. Another studio that stays with the Embracer group is Cryptic Studios. You might know them from their MMO titles like Neverwinter Online and Star Trek Online. Lost Boys Interactive is also staying with the Embracer group, uh, they helped co-develop Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. Captured Dimensions is also staying at the Embracer group, they are a tech company that specializes in high quality 3D assets and they have worked on a ton of uh, AAA games and Hollywood movies. So what does take to own after spending 460 million dollars? Oh yeah, and by the way. Uh, for those that think that Gearbox was sold at a loss and think that the company suddenly lost 9 million dollars of value, well, actually Embracer spent 363 million dollars uh, on day one when they acquired uh, Gearbox Entertainment. Uh, some of that was in cash and another part was in shares. However, Gearbox could have earned more if the studio performed well over the course of several years. Uh, however, uh, they were never able to reach that full six-year milestone and therefore were never able to earn that uh, 1.3 billion dollars. Maybe Gearbox accomplished some shorter milestones, so maybe they got something, but I highly doubt that Embracer will sell Gearbox Entertainment at a loss. But with that out of the way, Gearbox will operate as a studio within 2K Games and will be led by the founder and CEO Randy Pitchford and his management team. I assume this means that Steve Jones will still be handling Gearbox software, uh, Randy Farnell will be handling Gearbox properties, uh, Randy Pitchford was responsible for Gearbox Studios, which is the transmedia side of the company that's responsible for the upcoming Borderlands movie. Steve Gibson is responsible for Gearbox Publishing, but there are a lot of layoffs there and I'm not sure how those dynamics work at the moment. So Gearbox currently contains the following studios. Gearbox Software in Frisco, Texas. Uh, this is the main studio where it all started. Borderlands 1, Borderlands 2, Battleborn. Uh, Gearbox Montreal, uh, this is the second studio that helped develop Borderlands 3 and was responsible for several of those DLCs. Gearbox Studios Quebec is the third studio, which is being spearheaded by the leaders that built the second studio. Uh, Gearbox is currently working on six projects, which are in various stages of development. Five of them are sequels. 
two of those are Borderlands and one is Homeworld. Homeworld 3 is scheduled to release on May 13th. And a sequel in the Borderlands franchise could technically mean new Tales from the Borderlands 2, but I don't think that's the case. As 2K, you want to say, hey, we bought Borderlands 4. Mm -hmm. But they cannot officially uh, announce that just yet. Randy Pitchford has mentioned in the past that they are working on new Tiny Tina's Wonderlands experiences. It was also mentioned in the past that Gearbox was working on a new Brothers in Armor games, but there was nothing to announce just yet. Duke Nukem is also a franchise they want to work with. Uh, they didn't purchase the IP for nothing just to save Duke Nukem Forever. They are keeping the franchise relevant. They just announced a Duke Nukem G Fuel flavor. Gearbox Software also has at least one exciting new IP in the works. I have seen job offerings for a kid-friendly title and they were looking for someone with experience in developing games that utilize a third-person camera. Will Gearbox be creating a 3D platformer? I don't know, because Embracer also shut down several small projects last year uh, because of their reorganization. Beyond these six games, Take-Two believes that there are incredible opportunities to invest in new projects and to expand Gearbox's proven franchises. And while the Battleborn trademark is still registered to Gearbox Entertainment, I don't think this is one of those proven franchises. But damn, I would love a sequel or a relaunch just like Gigantic. I'm curious to learn how this acquisition will affect the Borderlands franchise and Gearbox software as a whole. I think 2K's goal is to ramp up the production as it is an important franchise to them. I've seen some concerns that people think that 2K will turn Borderlands into a live service game. And if we look at 2K's past, then we see Evolve and Battleborn and those didn't pan out that really well for them. Sadly, because they were great games. Gearbox Software always did a different approach. They were in the mindset of games better with life because you could play the game and it would be fine. But then there's this whole other layer that you can enjoy when you are connected. Other concerns that I have seen is the microtransactions. And if they stick to the Borderlands 2 or 3 approach, then I think we'll all be fine. Games should respect our time and don't upsell us on a solution. And let me know what you think about this acquisition, because on one side I think Gearbox has to jump through less hoops to get something done, because they are now one company. On another side, the power dynamic has changed, because one is in the service of another. So leave your comments down below, and thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy!